Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Taurus. If Taurus is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so Taurus, tonight we have the Empress card, which I mean, listen, when I see it, I think, okay, renewal, right? Things are being reborn. Your life is going in the direction, hopefully, that you want. I think of the Empress like spring, like a Persephone or a core. All right, let's check out these tea leaves. And so if you have not subscribed, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Also, if you would like to hit that like button or leave a comment, I would love to hear from you. I read all of the comments. Okay, so it seems like we have a bit of strife. Uh, we have, it looks like the mother goddess up here. You can see this kind of primordial form. It almost kind of looks like a larva, right? And then it has the arms and the head. And this is very much a fertility goddess uh, shape, right? That's the word, shape. <laughs> uh, so we have this energy, which is one of ancient primordial the what is primordial if you don't know the word primordial uh it is before everything else right it is the beginning stages if you can think of like baking something right and you have all of your ingredients and they're separated you have them in little bowls or you know if you're fancy like that you <laughs> you use a bowl for every ingredient like on the pictures of uh recipes <laughs> um but you have all of your ingredients and this is, you could think of the components, right? The primordial components and you mix them together and you get them all nice and, and I'm thinking of like a cake or a, I have to actually go bake some pies here in a little bit. And, uh, yeah, you think of them all sweet, <laughs> all mixed up and sweet. Uh, yeah, and so this is what this is. This is like a beginning component, or at least the paradigm through which these components kind of, uh, if you like a prism, right? The light goes in and it's refracted into a rainbow. That would be kind of this energy. I know, very abstract, right? <laughs> uh, but it is. To see this, it to me, it really says that there is a beginning to this new life, to this new chapter, to this new day. I am not going to take it anymore kind of energy. I have already said no more. I'm done. I deserve better. And I'm going to do something about it. And that's that energy. That is that energy. Now over here, it looks like we have this kind of almost, well, devil character, really, because you can see the little horns. Now we have another person here with this character. And it looks like they're kind of, you know, in a tussle a bit, like pulling back and forth. And this really kind of, to me, reads as maybe some kind of temptation right? Maybe there is something to do with like habitual uh, behaviors, compulsions, um, addictions, right? Or just kind of, you know, I mean, and I don't, I, it's not dismissive. I say, or just kind of, it's not little at all, but something like intrusive thoughts or uh, just like a sneaking paranoia, feeling, uh, you know, feeling unconfident about yourself, feeling very self-conscious, and it kind of drives you to perceiving the world as being against you, right? These are like common struggles that we all have, and I don't know, I'm not going to really say, I don't know if there's evil necessarily in the world, I don't know for sure. Uh, I know that 
there are things that happen that don't make sense. I know there are things that happen that are beyond comprehension. I know that there are things that kind of just like, it's like a stone in your shoe. It shows up and it's just making life so uncomfortable. And to me, that is often that feeling of the devil coming into your life, disturbing, disrupting your, pro your progress. Now, it is important, and Kalal Gibran actually wrote a really beautiful poem about this, and I forget what it's called. I think it's like Satan and the angel or something, but it, it's more of, it, it's, it, I, I can't remember even what book it comes in. I don't even think it's in one of his collections. I think it's like, well, maybe short stories or whatever, like short prose or you know, I don't know. You can look it up. <laughs> but the gist of it is, right, that there is a, a monk, right, and he's walking through the forest. He comes upon somebody who's injured. They talk. He's trying to help him. Well, he finds out this is the devil. Well, this is somebody who serves God, right? This is somebody who's devoted their entire being, both corporal and uh, spiritual. And so why would they help the devil? But they're also bound to a promise, not unlike a doctor, right? To help save a life, to help save a soul. Now, we can argue over, you know, does the devil have a soul or not, right? <laughs> I, I'm not, listen, I'm not getting into all this tricky stuff because I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know at all. Um, but then, you know, it basically progresses out to this kind of conundrum. If he doesn't help, is he serving his purpose? But also if he helps, is he serving his purpose? Also, if he doesn't help, What does that mean for the duality of things? If this being, this entity ceases to exist, what does it mean for the greater uh, balance? So it could be argued that sometimes we do. We go through these moments where we tussle with the devil. These are our our ordeals. This is the furnace for which we, yeah, temper ourselves. We become strong through our choices. We decide, you know, do we vanquish this thing? Do we walk away from it? Do we look at it and say, okay, I'm feeling this way. I'm thinking this way. This is happening in my life. It's not in my control right now. I'm going to let it just be what it is. I'll keep the front door wide open, all of the windows wide open, and, and it'll pass. And it'll pass. I'll let it go. And so I, I look at this and I feel like it really is. It's this kind of you know, age old story of the battle that we have with ourselves, with our circumstances. And there is, there is the, if you could think of, uh, knew it. Who is knew it? <laughs> A beautiful goddess, right? From the Egypto pantheons. And it is a primordial goddess, the grandmother of the sky. She's often depicted in blue, right? Dark blue, golden stars across her whole body. She's kind of in, I don't know what the pose is, like a table, I don't know what the yogic poses are called, but kind of a table, looks like a table pose, I don't know. Uh, wrapped around the sky, the earth beneath, or the gods beneath, often there's usually like a boat or something beneath, a bar bark, I think they're called. Uh, and so she watches over us. She's never not there. 
when you feel lost, when you feel forgotten, when you feel I'm spinning my wheels, I don't know what to do, I'm alone, the universe has forsaken me, life is too difficult, you go outside and you look up at that sky, that mystery, and that's what it is, that great mystery. You look at her stars and you look at her, she is looking at you and you are being watched out for. Symbolically, this is also where we get all of our inspiration. The great unknown, the unconscious, which is very synonymous with the sky. The vast unknown, the infinite universe. And so when we commune with her, she gifts us. She gives us the love that we need, the confidence that we need. And she gives us the pieces, the fragments of ideas, of uh, inspirations, of impressions, of that stuff that we need to get that fire roaring within. And so as you, yeah, get through this hardship, this maybe I do, it really just feels a lot like not believing in yourself. When you start to find that confidence, it starts to take hold and you gain some traction. She is there. Now, I'm not going to say she's the reason, although she's a part of it. And so, we open the door and we walk through into the next room. And that's the goddess, right? That's the empress. Persephone. Do we know Persephone? Do you remember her? She's the daughter of Demeter. Demeter is one of the harvest goddesses. She's like big mama, right? And... Uh, her daughter gets taken. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. She brings the flowers with her, right? Everywhere she walks, flowers and, and little baby animals or, you know, this beautiful kind of aster. Um, the, if you imagine kind of the aesthetic of, of uh, you know, I know it's, it's Christian, but Easter, right? All the eggs and the beginnings and the beautiful flowers and all that, okay? And Persephone is very much related to this, at least vibe, right? And she's taken. And she is taken down to Hades, which you could think of as like the underworld, as hell or whatever. And uh, she doesn't want to go at first. She's freaked out. She's been with her mom and, you know, up on the day side forever. And so she goes down and everybody's in a big uproar and she's, you know, freaked out, as I said. And, and what she, I don't know, somehow, some way, maybe even finds a little fondness for her captor, who is also her consort, who is also, you know, like your husband, which, listen, very, very sticky ethics in some of these stories, right? And uh, she kind of gets that Stockholm Syndrome or whatever, and, but then she starts to thrive. She becomes truly the queen of the underworld. I mean, she gets it. She is doing a good job. She starts to really like it. She's like, you know, what do they call those, like, girl boss or whatever? And uh, and so then, right, they work out a deal. Demeter, she's still up there, man. She's looking for her daughter. She's, like, on Nancy Grace. She's, like, get this, you know, we, I know where she's at. Let's get her. So they work out a deal. Again, sticky ethics here. Everybody's deciding for this, you know, beautiful, powerful being, uh, this Persephone what she's going to be doing with her time and efforts, right? And so they bring her back every spring. She gets to spend half the year, half the year upside, half the year down on the underside, right? So she goes back and forth. And so spring, when we know spring is starting to 
show up. Everything's melting and it's, you know, starting to, uh, starting to sprout. You see the little pieces of, you know, green sticking through the leaves and stuff. You know Persephone has come home, okay? And so, looking at all this, I just, I feel like it is such an energy of rebirth for you, Taurus. It is a time in your life when, yeah, maybe you're a little freaked out because things are changing. But you also have that power. You have that power. And also, you just have that, I'm not putting up with this anymore. Do not sleep on the power of being totally tired of something. I'm done, right? And that will light a fire under your, you know what I'm saying, right? It will. So let's take a look. We're going to keep going here. I know I've been rambling a little bit, but it feels powerful to me, I must say. Now we have, it looks like, We have the cat. You can see the cat here. Here's the head, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the body here. Okay, kind of looks like it's almost shrouded in darkness a little bit. It's like creeping around in the shadows of the house. And here we have it almost looks like, even with the head shaped this way, it reminds me of one of the Buddhas. Specifically, I think, and I believe... Maybe like a Thai depiction. So, I really, I'm looking at this and the, the cat represents independence for me. Always kind of this feeling of serving self, but not in a way that is, malevolent to other right or predatory or or just you know careless thoughtless uh a cat is very calculated most of them anyway i mean some of them are just they <laughs> you know um but most of them are very calculated and they do what they feel right if a cat's hungry it's gonna get up it's gonna go to the get its food. If it's, there's no food, it's going to come tell you, Hey, excuse me, human. This is empty. Like what's going on here? You, you have one job and you're failing at it. Uh, you know, if they want love, they're going to come and, you know, at, demand love. And when they're done, they get up and they're out of there. Right. Very independent. Obviously, and I'm going to go for the most superficial, <laughs> the most obvious relation here is finding that Zen place, right? Finding that place of a quieted heart, a quieted mind to kind of find yourself in a place of, yeah, peace, ease. Now, I'm not saying it's necessarily going to be the most joyous moment of your life. But I think consistently at ease, which is so different for you. And maybe even feels strange a little bit. Like you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop, right? If you haven't heard that phrase before, it, that something might happen, right? You're just waiting like it's good now, but of course something bad's going to happen. That's that feeling, right? And so this is just kind of, accepting things are going to sometimes go wrong sometimes things are going to feel like it's the worst but that doesn't mean it's always going to feel that way right and we accept it i'm going to do my best i'm going to do what i can i'm not going to take on right the emotional load of everything I cannot control. Oh, this is something I work on constantly. 
Every day I have to think about it. Why am I getting upset about things that have nothing to do with me? Why am I getting upset about things that I can do zero about? Why? Because it feels like home. It feels like home to live in that kind of pain. Concern about every little thing. We're not meant to have so many things to be concerned or worried about. We forget that even just, well, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, people had very narrow lives. The scope of that which they were exposed to, the stimuli, the data, the information, and I mean this like as just how many people even you meet in a day, how many cars you see in a day, all the sound, the light, how many kinds of toothpaste there are to choose from. The expectations, large and small. The amount of things that we're supposed to decide, the amount of things we're supposed to just know. It's a lot. And of course, it makes sense that our minds are just busy, chaotic. It's like a hoarder's house. And so we must, we must find ways to alleviate some of that. We, might, we must find ways to, well, get it a little more organized. Let it go. Let things go. Let them be as they are and let them go as they are. Right? And you can do that through a lot of different means. You know, I mean, there are so many different kinds of practices that help and will be beneficial. Of course, we often talk about meditation. I like to talk about things like creativity. I believe that crea creating is the ultimate purging and processing and integrating. It is sublimation. But there are other ways as well, right? Finding repetitive, you know, something like crocheting, stimming, writing, just even talking, going somewhere to a support group. I have shared this quite often. I am, you know, I do 12-step stuff, AANA, for substance abuse. In recovery for almost 10 years now. <laughs> and, uh, and sometimes that's what it takes, is going somewhere and, well, even just listening to somebody else. Relating. Being in a moment where you're not you know, distracted by a million things. You're just listening to somebody give their testimony. And if you're brave, which I usually am not, <laughs> uh, I've been in, I've been in meetings and well, we call it in rooms for many years now, it feels like, and I still get very nervous. And That feeling of letting it all just be said. Sometimes that's what it takes. But I do. I feel you really in this independent space. I feel you confident. I feel you really making the decision to push forward here. To go into that new era. Now, we also have the letter E. So that's important. The letter E, we have the letter E here. There's a heart by it. So I'm guessing this is somebody that you love. You love. <laughs> it could be romantic. It could be family. It could be friend. You know, any of the kinds of love. There's so many kinds of love to choose from, right? And so uh, it does feel like a love connection. Um, doesn't necessarily mean romantic, though. All right. So we also have a deer who is running. We have a person who is watching it. 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. So I do feel like there will be some visions for you. Dreams too, possibly, right? And so maybe you are somebody who is very prone to receiving imagery. Um, and it does, it feels like this is going to be something that you experience in that kind of visual field, right? It doesn't have to be waking life, but it, I feel like it kind of maybe is. Um, we also have uh, uh, MC, MC as letters here, MC, and that's right in here. Um, so I feel like, because right here we have I don't know. I don't want to lift this up, but oh yeah, you can see. So there's kind of the frowny face, then there's the happy face down here. Okay. And we also have the gallows, which is where the hanged man kind of, you know, well, goes to do his thing. <laughs> That's what we'll say. Um, and so I do, I feel like there is going to have to be some kind of decision made. Doesn't necessarily feel good or bad, um, but I think the outcome is kind of what you're worried about. Like what's gonna happen here? So I feel like you're kind of back and forth about it, but there, there's no way around it. This is something that you're gonna have to do. So, uh, you know, choose wisely. <laughs> it's something that is, um, that you can't keep putting off and that's kind of the feeling I keep getting here is that it's something that it's gotten to the point where you just have to make a decision now you know there's no just like okay well we'll think about it later all right let's go ahead we're going to do three lucky numbers oh, come on Ooh, ooh, that one went running okay we have number three lucky number three Okay, number 50, five, zero, 50, three and a 50 and 82, 82. All right, let's see, what else? We're gonna do our Mary Magdalene Oracle cards just to finish this reading off. And these are just gonna kind of punctuate the reading. All right, we have the cave. Sanctuary exists within. Sanctuary exists within. So a lot of us are coming up on these holidays. Here in America, um, tomorrow is, is uh, Thanksgiving or what do they call it now? It's like Indi Indigenous Peoples Day or remember, I don't know, I can't remember. I should know. I'm, I'm literally, I'm literally Choctaw. So, and I'm not going to put my phone on there. <laughs> I just showed you for a second. It's just a timer though. Nothing, nothing interesting. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to see what they have renamed. I want to, because it is important. It is important that we I know I'm having, let's go. I don't know, I can't see it. What is, wait, what is Thanksgiving called now? There we go. Turkey day. <laughs> it's just says Turkey day. I know, I hear anyways where I'm at up in the, um, upper midwest there is a big push towards kind of rebranding of the um of thanksgiving and you know understandably right understandably uh but i don't know we still celebrate here at our house um and 
what I can say is that I know a lot of us get really stressed out, anxiety ridden. Um, we worry about, you know, I don't know. I get uh, one of the big things here, politics, right? Being talked about, <laughs> unfortunately, at holidays or, you know, just people coming in with dramas and, you know, whatever. We all have things going on. You know, we've all had our little minor and large tower moments throughout the year. And so we get together with the people that we love, hopefully. Or, you know, people, maybe there's a lot of different people you could be spending different holidays with, obviously. But we must also go into it a little bit like it's battle. Not that we're going to argue, let's refrain from that if we can. Um, but having that interior cave, that place that we go in our mind when things start to feel a little bit too much, right? Uh, when you can feel the anxiety sneaking up. Um, yeah, we need to have that place of kind of a little bit of solitude in our mind. I will go stand in the hallway or out on the, you know, outside for a minute and cool off and breathe and let my mind go into that place. So I'm not tripping, right? I'm not freaking out in the kitchen. And, and that's okay. So I think it is. It's important to get ourselves grounded, have a little bit of a plan, especially if you know you're going into you know, uh, contentious territory, which I have, a, I have a suspicion that a lot of people are, you know, uh, these holidays coming up. And so let's fortify ourselves, right? Emotionally and spiritually going in. All right, Taurus, I, I love you. I hope that you know that because it is true. And I appreciate you so much for spending this time with me. It is always my greatest honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And uh, if you would like to leave a comment, I read them all. I'd love to hear from you. And again, with that, I'm going to say I love you. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Be safe. Be responsible drivers. And keep an eye out when you're on the roadways. We all know these different holidays. Wherever you are, whatever you're going to be celebrating in the next month or two, you know, it can get really bad out there. So just keep your eyes out. Please be safe. I love you. Good night.